Hello everyone, my name is Axel and I like to build stuff. A few weeks ago, I built a compressed air engine. There we go. And it worked better than a dead horse. So in this video, I'm here to make a version two. First, let's discuss some of the engine's flaws. For starters, it's sheer awful performance. I had to cut 45 minutes of failed test footage out of the showcase video, and that's not all of it. I either had to cut out times that it didn't run, or it leaked, or it even exploded at one point. But when it did successfully run, it didn't run that well. Namely, its runtime was horrible. And this was because of that huge 4cc engine displacement. That's completely unneeded. It doesn't really add any power and it just gets rid of efficiencies. Also, it was extremely leaky. That was from the air bottle cap I used, where I used an injection molded bottle cap and just hot glued it onto a 3D printed part. Yeah, it did not work that well. And lastly, because I made the reservoir out of ABS, because I had no more plastic left, the layers decided to split. So to fix some of these issues, I first started with changing the displacement of the engine from a huge 4cc engine to a modest 2.2cc engine with a 15mm bore and a 10mm stroke. For reference, Tom Stanton's engine uses a 15 millimeter bore with a nine millimeter stroke. I also changed the crank so then they would have square inserts because this should give them a little less wiggle room and less time to twist when the engine is running. I buffed up the conrod, a bunch of other parts, and then I actually changed the reservoir to have a one to one volume ratio with a combustion chamber. My last engine had a one to four ratio, meaning the reservoir was a quarter the size of the cylinder and this was not good for performance. To prevent leaking out of the top, I decided to 3D print my own bottle cap lid with an O-ring inserted in the center. It also had a 5mm hole on the inside to try and regulate the airflow. On top of all of that, I did a bunch of CAD simulations to try and optimize the perfect valve dimensions for this engine. All of these modifications seemed to do very good in CAD, so then I sent it over to my 3D printer and it was time to assemble it. If you guys want to know how to build it, there's a link up there. And now, it's time to do an air test. Alrighty, so I just finished building the engine. It's not lubricated or anything. And it, it runs super smooth now. So, I'm gonna give it a test, and uh, hopefully, it should rev a little higher than the version one. After that, I'll take it outside, and I'll test it with the bottle. The thread came out super good. It's super tight and with that o-ring it doesn't leak. So, yeah, here's the test. <laughs> yeah, that reads a lot higher. I was expecting it to take a little while to start up, but no, it started the first time. So yeah, I guess, time for a high pressure test. Alright, so, I ended up super gluing the bottom cap to the reservoir, because uh, every time, uh, last, last time if I got above, I think, 40 PSI, the bottle would blast off. So I've glued it on there. And uh, I also have a tiny cycling pump, uh, because I don't have a big one, and I don't want to test with the air compressor yet. Let's give this thing a uh, first test. It's fully detached, we have high pressure. Here we go. There you go, so it runs, woohoo. Um, now, I guess I'm gonna go out to the air compressor and uh, fire it up. All right, I'm out here in the garage. I've got the air engine right here. It is ready for test, but before I show you all that, I need to give a quick disclaimer that this is pretty dangerous. Before, I was only doing this with a like 20 PSI with a bike pump. This time, I'm using an air compressor, and we're gonna be seeing if we can go up to 80 PSI. So make sure you're wearing eye protection, and if you're holding it in your hand, make sure you're wearing gloves. This is not safe. Please be careful if you decide to do this. All right, so. Um, 
I've got the engine right here. It's attached. Um, I've got the air compressor right here. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is first test at 20 PSI, which is what we normally do. We're at 20 PSI, here we go. Yeah, so uh, there we go, it ran. Um, when I was looking at the meter, it said 20, but that seemed a lot like 30. Yeah, so the flywheel didn't come off. Uh, it ran just fine. It ran, uh, I don't know what the timestamp down there was, but yeah, it ran pretty well. So, all right, this time, welding glove. That's 40. There we go. Yeah, so it's it's running pretty well. Um, it's running down to a very, very low pressure. So that means it's pretty efficient with the reservoir size. Time for 60. Oh, the flywheel came off. <laughs> Yeah, 60 PSI ripped one of the nuts off. There you go. It didn't have a lot of pressure uh, left. So this time, let's take it back up to 60. There you go. There's 60. And that time, it ran super low. Look at that squish. There you go. Right, and uh, now, I actually grabbed my tachometer this time, and uh, yeah, let's measure the RPM of this engine. And for the RPM test, I'm only gonna be testing it at 40 PSI. The max, the max we reached was 4,080 RPM at 40 PSI. Okay, that was cool. I don't think it could turn over anymore. Did I just break the engine? It's seizing right there. So I am curious what happened. And it's at the bottom of the stroke too. So let's open it up. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Doesn't look like much, but look at that. Holy mackerel. So this engine is better in every way compared to the version one engine. The power, the sound, and the runtime. I'm gonna be making some more improvements to this engine before I go up to the multiple cylinder engine I promised in the version one video. Even though I said a straight four engine in the last video, I've actually decided I'm gonna bump that down two cylinders to a two cylinder engine, mainly for efficiency and power balancing. But you guys still get to decide what engine I make. V2, straight two, box or two, I, I don't know, you guys decide. Also, if you guys have any more video ideas for a future video project, 
send them down in the comments below because I love hearing your guys' ideas. The most liked comment will be selected for a future video project. There's also links to all the Thingiverse files down in the description below as well as the build video for this engine. Also, after this video, I'm also going to take a break from the engines and focus on the viewer requested videos. So make sure to submit your ideas down below in the comments. Also, before I end, I would like to thank the 6.8% of people who have actually subscribed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it, as it tremendously helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And on that note, that is all I have time for today. I'd like to thank you all very so much for watching. Remember, the links are down in the description, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.